Okay, everyone. Uh, I think that was about five minutes, maybe three, maybe four. Um, it's good to see all of you talking. I hope it actually was about the theory, uh, or in the worst case, about how I was not clear. But yeah, maybe some comments or some questions about it so far. Yeah, you have. We you already shared it. Like, what what's the theory? Bit? So I, I'm going to make us come back to this later. But the way the reason I'm showing you this is that, uh, as you'll see you can't please every stage, so to speak. So some games, some art, is really good at, be, at, at appealing to people who think like stage four, mostly, but not so good for mm -hmm. stage two, or the other way around. And you can, if you kind of have a feeling for that, this is very general and abstract, you can say, well, yeah, yeah, this will piss off some people and they will say my game is pretentious, but I'm not going for them anyway, so that's okay. So you can make that trade off and you're aware of it. That's, that's the idea I'm going for here. But you'll, I'll, I'll hopefully make that clear, and if it's not clear, then, you know, just try to remember it, and maybe it will become clear over time or something. Okay. So that was stage one and two. Now we go to stage three, and this is going to be a very long section, because at stage three you're making a huge leap in, in ability. I mean, in general, I have this impression that these people are quite bright for their age, but anyway. So this is <coughs> Wendy. He's, he's changed the names. Um, she's 17, and she has reached stage three. <coughs> So would you describe what you see here? Well, I see a woman who is way past her prime of life. Her, yeah, who is kind of, I get the impression from the money on the table, it adds to the cheapness, but it kind of reminds me of a prostitute. And that's what she reminds me of in a way. She looks like she's mourning for her lost beauty. You can tell when she was younger, she was probably fairly pretty. This is, okay. How can you tell? Well, because I don't think that people that aren't pretty worry much about their looks. Okay. Just by her features and stuff, you can tell, given that, all her given that all her wrinkles were gone. I admire people who grow old with grace. I don't mean sit at home and grow old or something, but they aren't worried about not being young. They accept it. Does she accept it? Well, it looks like, very reluctantly, um, how can you tell? Because she seems to be looking in her mirror as though it's a glance. She's not admiring herself at all. It's, it's more like harsh reality dawns. It's pathetic. Because she's wearing this pink silk thing and the high heel shoes and she's just disgusting. So there's a contrast between the clothes she's wearing and her physical looks. Yeah, yeah. But the lingerie and the shoes she's wearing are dumpy too. They're old like she is. <coughs> Anything else that points to oldness? Yeah, things just seem run down. The top of the table is nice, but things seem run down. Is that a piece of paper burnt on the floor? And, well, the flowers are dead. Uh, so this is a piece of burnt paper, for example. So what do you think of the colors? I like them. I don't think they detract from the painting at all. They add. How? Well, I guess it's the contrast between her horrible agedness and her pink thing, her little shirt. So what do you think the subject of this painting is? Um, it tries to put across the thing with beauty and that it's also superficial. You get old and it's putting across the pointlessness of the whole looks thing, the obsession with beauty. Look how she's no longer like saying it's about the ugly woman itself, it's about a concept, right? Is that a good subject for a painting? Yeah, I like it, because I think that this painting definitely does have a lesson to it. I mean, I can picture her 30 years earlier, sitting in the same chair, doing the same thing, and being absolutely beautiful, because she has such a woeful expression. I admire the painting, if that's what he was um, going for. I mean, they know it, but everyone is as guilty as the next person, and being vain, and I think this used to say, uh, I catch myself being it, or something as well. Um, what feelings are in the painting? Basically the pathetic state of human condition, I guess. And that's really true. What are your feelings? It's depressing, I like it a lot. <laughs> Can you imagine a 12 year old saying that? With that previous stage, no. I really do. Why? Well, it's depressing, but it's also something I'm obsessed with. 
the fact that people are so superficial and materialistic. And I'm not exempt from that. But I catch myself being that way and it frustrates me and this just illustrates it again. Okay, so I guess I went ahead. You can follow it. So she has reached stage three. <coughs> and as you notice, she doesn't assume that the subject of this painting is what's being shown. Right? It's not Ida itself. It's a theme, it's vanity, it's aging. So, um, and I quote, one could say that for her, the subject is the meaning of what is being pictured rather just than what is being pictured. So in a game, like, you can actually look this up. There's people who've been, a who've been talking about this seriously. Like, what is the meaning of Tetris beyond just stacking blocks? You could, there are people who did, who tried serious an analysis of this. What about the game Passage? Did Simon let you play Passage? No. Have you heard of it? Um, what about Papers, Please? Does that ring a bell? Yeah. There's a deeper story to that, which you can say there's a meaning to this story <coughs> as well. And there's more games like that. For some reason, I, I thought I had a... Hmm, something went wrong. I thought I had pictures of them here, but okay. So, so she has reached the next level like there are no levels in your brain, but still, so you reach the next level of the theory of mind, which is that not, o not only do you have a different mind from mine, but the way you experience the world <coughs> can be different from mine. You can be more obsessed with vanity. You can be more upset when you grow older than me, or less. And that everyone has these different experiences. And that's a new level of being self-aware, being aware of ourselves as having our experience. So before that, you have your experience, but without being aware of that, you just are. But now you also have it, like you also know you have it, and you can take a step back and reflect on it. This probably sounds pretty abstract at this point. Um, but it's yeah, I think that's ma the main thing, that you can take a step back and look at yourself in a way. So then you're aware that it's interpreted. Even if you don't know you're aware, you're <laughs> aware of that now. So, um... So you have protagonists and, and um, oh, I switched. Something went wrong here, this should be one by one. So now you're a bit overwhelmed, probably. Um, okay, bullet point one. One expects to find the meaning of the paintings in the subjective experience of individual. So because she approaches things like, she might experience the world differently, Ida, so that's what it's about. So it could be hers, those of others, and this structures her emotional response. So the only people in this paint who are involved with the painting, really, are she, Wendy, Ida, and whoever painted it. Those are the only people really involved. So she switches between imagining herself in Ida's position, comparing it to her own, but also in like what was the painter going for? Because she kind of tried to approach this from the different subjective experiences. Right? And make sense of it that way. And the game equivalent, I would say, is like protagonists and their backstory. Like you immerse yourself in their lives and what their story is and why they do the things they do. Right? If, if you're like, okay, I, I, I kind of get tired of macho men uh, killing everything on sight type of games, but if like, there might be a difference in, in their backstory, like is this person traumatized or not? And is that the way he acts or something like that? So basically, any moment you ask yourself, like, what was the intention of the game designers when they, they did this? I don't know if you ever do that, but you, know, you could. So if you do that, then you're only at stage three. Yay! Mm -hmm. And I, we do hope that you reach that stage, because it's like, you get better at reflecting. And this also went a bit wrong. Well, so Wendy, she tries to find meaning in the subjective experience of Ida. She's aware it's different from hers. And she doesn't just, she's not like Emile, right? She doesn't just go, this is nice, this is nice, this is nice. No, she, she looks at the whole painting and tries to connect the things. It's a run-down table because that reflects the inner experience of Ida, right? And, and because of empathy, she gets beyond those stereotypes of beauty and ugliness. And she gets the painting's expressiveness. And I think this is very important because that's how we can get past prejudice in general, right? The whole world would be a bit better if we could be a bit more empathic like this. Which is also why I hope you get to this stage because you just become better people in general. Just nicer to each other. Um, game equivalents, 
I don't know, I keep that open. So this was quite a, quite a step, I think. Can I, um, like maybe you could continue on the games you discussed, or uh, come up with some new ones that you thought of, or maybe some games, for example, that were not joyful to play, but you still thought were a good game to play, and why? Maybe talk about those things with each other, or, or maybe about your own game, what you're going for. Like I remember, like um, one group was going for a horror story, right? And then you said, I would never play a game that's scary, right? Which is fine, but it's still also good if you're capable of ex understanding why someone else might do it instead, right? So those kind of discussions about maybe each other's projects could be useful. Can I ask you to give another five minutes mm -hmm. in this? And after that, we can have a moment for discussion. You have a short break. Yeah? All right. Great. Thank <laughs> you.